Okay. Well, we took game one against Turbo Fog, which is exactly where you want to be against Turbo Fog. This hand uh, similarly has potential for some explosive damage. Being on the draw means that we don't mind uh, keeping a two lander, especially since we have uh, one drop and two two drops. <clears throat> and that's a pretty good draw. So we're going to be able to really hammer uh, in some damage here and hopefully seal up the game with a pair of Stoke the Flames before our opponent can get uh, any Sphinx's tutelage nonsense off the ground. Yeah, it's a card. It's getting slashed. Um, yeah. Don't really have any interest in allowing him to get any value whatsoever off of Jace. Even if it's not the most mana efficient of plays. This means we can play Abbott next turn, potentially play an Exiled Mountain uh, or one or two drop if we then play the Mountain and play the spell. Ooh. Or I guess just a one drop. It's probably going... I mean, I don't know if they even run Dissolves in this topsy-turvy, turbo-fogging pile of cards. They do. <laughs> That's an update. All right. Come on. Don't you have uh, some do-nothing enchantment or combo piece? as they call them, in your reclusive corner of the woods. Try and hit a land drop. And do so. This is pretty good. Uh, it means we can go ahead and rumble, encourage him to use one of his winds of Calcisma or what have you. Ugh, he doesn't do it, though, so... Um, I don't even think this deck runs for Dissolve. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to try and stick the idol on here. All right, things are coming up Millhouse, although he can start fogging at any point here. Uh, we do have the means to just kind of handily stoke him out from here. I think we're going to go full swing Thunderbreak Regent. And then be aware that next turn he can start Aether Spout. Oh, F6. No, 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 no. Turn off auto yields. There we go. <laughs> ho, ho. Do it again. I yield to this. Okay, so he's going to use one of his fog abilities. think we'll stick the thunder break here the thing is it has <clears throat> only eight fog spells and then like a whole bunch of enchantments so um feel pretty comfortable that he's not going to be able to assemble everything with three in hand before we do eight with Stoke, and he has to choose between putting down like a inside of or you know digging through time, playing an enchantment, sorry, treasure cruising or playing an enchantment. <clears throat> so he's tapped out now, um, effectively. We have to be aware of. Hmm. 
negate, which he didn't have. Uh, so we're going to assume that he has the fog, but happily ask him to show us. The alternative is to only swing with Thunder Break and leave these two back to Stoke again, which I actually like the idea of. This way he dings himself for casting Calcisma, and we punish him for tapping out. The prowess is neither here nor there since combat damage is not how we win this game. Come on. What? <laughs> That's wild. Okay. Um, wow. Seems good. Not going to lie. But we will be happy to play Abbott. Potentially exile a mountain. Play a mountain. Play... Eidolon, but first Swift Spear. He has one green open. If we can, I think maybe we should prioritize doing three, bring him to four, uh, and then like an uncounterable um, uh, exquisite off the top will kill him. Not playing Eidolon is not something I feel extremely comfortable with here, but I think this is just an invitation to close close the door on him. So we're going to do it this way. He's got a lot of mana. I mean, you know, enough to cast while he's treasure cruising. So now he has enough to do like a... Tutelage or a uh, Cruffix, you know, draw enchantment. A day's undoing. And a scoop. Okay, well, that was interesting, but uh, I think that uh, the sequencing on that last turn was probably correct because we just had him uh, dead to rights with six out of uh, 44 cards in our deck and then, you know, other hasty threats in there as well. So it wouldn't have been that difficult to uh, seal it up after that. Uh, this Turbo Fog deck is not easy to play against, let me tell you that. It took a couple of matches for me to uh, learn some painful lessons, but uh, I think it's a more of a uh, Flavor of the Week type deck, hopefully, says the Mono Red player. Uh, at any rate, I hope you all enjoyed the match video, and join me back here for more Mono Red action in Magic Origin Standard. You know where, Maximus Games. All right. We'll see you next time.